Hello everybody, my name is Dennis Jensen and uh, this is going to be a new tutorial about making a character design for 3D. I'm really excited about this tutorial. I hope you are as well. Um, this is actually uh, the third time that I'm making this introduction video simply because there were some errors with uh, YouTube that didn't want me to upload a clip from a movie which is understandable <laughs> doing to copyright and that stuff. Anyway, I'm going to show some really nice pictures instead and tell a little bit about what is good with these designs. So, let's go into it. First, this little video is uh, going to be an introduction to what we're going to learn. I'm going to talk a little bit about who am I, what are we going to learn, what is the steps and um, how do our minds think when we're making character design and what should we look out for and what should we avoid and then before we start I did some things in preparation that you might want to do as well and that's basically it so who am I? as I said my name is Dennis and um, most of my tutorials can be found on polyface.com I'm 24 years old and I'm currently starting on my third year bachelor as a, a computer graphic artist which means that I do a lot of 3D and I do a lot of concept development and character design. So that's basically my favorite things to do. It's a small school in Denmark but we have some of the best teachers in the world in my opinion. We had some guys from Pixar, DreamWorks and um, Lou, Sky Studio, I think it's called, all kind of places. Uh, we also had from Framestore, but the point is that I really think that we learn a lot of good things. So what are we going to learn in this tutorial? I can't fit everything down. This is a couple of days work that I compressed into three hours of video tutorial where I talk over it. Um, I will only try to tell the most important things because I don't want to waste your time. <coughs> but it's basically the method that I use when I'm doing these designs. And it's not like some of them are well familiar, but some of them is I feel like is uh, underrated things. I spend a lot of time making a really lot of bad drawings and then in the end I combine it and try to find the best thing that I can get from what I went through. So yeah, that's basically it. And the steps that we're going to take is we're going to research and with that research we're going to draw from that, drawing from the reference and then we're going to start thumbnailing and making silhouettes to get the basic shape. When we have the basic shape we're going to narrow it down and start sketching within the thumbnails that we made. We're going to make some choices that enhance the story that we're thinking about. Um, after sketching a character, we're going to find a pose and we're going to make a final drawing where we start by sketching it out. After that, we're going to make the line art and render it out. So it's going to be a nice looking drawing in the end, which you can use to present and hopefully sell the idea you have behind this design. Um, and then in this, in the end of this first video introduction, we are going to talk a little about what can you do before you start with the, these videos. So what is character design all about? In my opinion, it's about getting a feeling across. I mean, you can have a lot of characters. You can have one that is dumb and small or tall or fat or a jackass and all kind of different characters. But to have a nice character design, you need to express who this character is through the way they dress and the way they look just by showing maybe where the eyes are placed and what shape does they have and all that kind of stuff. So basically what this leads me on to is exploring the opportunities. You need to explore a lot of things in order to um, take the right choices. So if you have a smart character you might want him to have glasses but maybe he would also look smart with a pipe in his mouth. What looks the best and what fits your character the best? If he's an old guy, maybe he should have a pipe. But if he's a little kid, 
maybe you should just have big round glasses. I mean, there's so many choices and you need to go through a lot of them to make a nice design. There's a saying that says, to be good at drawing, you need to make 1000 bad drawings first and then the good drawings will come slowly. It's the same thing with uh, designing, at least in my opinion. Uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce yourself to the worst enemy you have. Are you ready? Your own comfort zone. So the comfort zone is whenever you go down to the supermarket or the store. Uh, unconsciously, you always choose the same way. You always go down to the supermarket the same road as you did last time. When you're in the cantina, you always sit down at the same place as you used to. When I did 3D, I had a tendency to make cartoony stuff all the time. And I really wanted to make something realistic, but I tried, and then in the end, I ended up with something cartoony ca again. And that's kind of a bad habit, because if I did something realistic, I would challenge myself, because there's other things to think about, and I would gain so much more. So I did that in one project, and it did really well. Um, this nice illustration that I did is a pool, swimming pool, as you see it from above. On one side you have your comfort zone, and on the other side you have the unknown, the place where you don't want to go, because it feels uncomfortable. When you're swimming around in your own pool, you find a lot of nice ideas. But if you go out to the unknown, you will get a really nice idea as well, but you will gain a lot more, you will grow so much more. And that's why the green dot in the unknown is bigger. Then the smaller. It will be tougher, so it will be harder to find the green dot, but the result is so much better. So keep that in mind. Um, yeah, and now I would like to share some of the designs that I think is cool. So we all know we all know Russell from Up. The thing about him is, if we compare to uh, Carl, I think his name is. You can see they are very different in the design. I mean, Carl is very square, and Russell is very round in his shape. And I think that's the greatest contrast ever. I really like how they both, their personalities shine through. And I think, in especially in Up, the character design was just amazing. If you look at um, Carl, his face is square, his glasses is square, his fingers is square, his whole body is square. Everything about him, almost his butterfly is square. Everything is square except the nose. And that also draws a lot of attention to him. He has a nice contrast. And I like that he's square because I don't know if that was the point with him. But it makes him kind of be this old square guy that don't really want to do anything because square is, is kind of a boring, boring shape. So I hope that was the intention and I guess it was because it works really well. Um, the clip that I was going to show was from Wango. And what I really like about Wango is that you can clearly see the contrast between him and all the other guys in the town. Wango comes from this environment where he he's alone and he is a pet, and then he suddenly comes out in the wild wild west. Where all these guys are mean looking at badasses, and he looks totally out of place. And that's also a cool thing that he's a chameleon, and he has to try to fit in. So what better choice to make him a chameleon? I mean, that really enhances the story. But you can just see the guys in the background, they all look like they have a nice history behind all the choices. They, they look well crafted as character designs. Another design I have is Alex the Lion. What I like about him is the unique shapes that he had. This character design is made by Craig Kelman, uh, a guy I actually also had as a teacher, and he's really good. And I also like that this design is so uneven. I mean, the eyes are not placed in the middle of the head, they're up in the top, which kind of makes him look a bit uh, stupid, because he looks like he has a small brain now. 
and he has a s big mouth. Maybe that indicates that he likes to talk a lot. Um, and there's <laughs> kind of a funny story on this, because this is the grandma who was uh, the bad guy in Madagascar 2. And uh, my teacher, Craig, he, um, he worked on both of them. And for the sequel, he was told that he should make a villain. So he started drawing and he had a lot of uh, problems with making this character design. He spent half a year just drawing these different characters. And after that half year, DreamWorks came and they said, Listen, uh, we're not going to use any villain design anyways. So we're just going to use the grandma. And I, I mean, I don't really feel that was the right decision because when we look, when I look at her, I don't feel like she has that much nice things to her character design. She looks kind of boring, and I can't really see. Yeah, she's an old woman, but what else? I can't see anything that is personal about her other than she's an old woman. So, in my opinion, a bad choice. Hello again, guys. Um, I just want to wrap this video up. The things that I did before hand was um, I did find a story and my story is about this short pirate. He has a problem because he has never had success. So he's trying to get success, he's trying to be a successful pirate. And he's found this treasure map so he's finally get his break. He can show the other pirates that he's cool. But the problem is the other pirates is going to try and hold him back. Also because they want the treasure from themselves. Um, so that's what I'm trying to convey in the character design and maybe in the pose. Uh, after that I did some research. I found, uh, I filled a sheet with images for um, clothing and designs and mood and that stuff. And then I also found a sheet for style guard. Style guide style guide <laughs> meaning what style do I want do I want a really cartoony style guide or do I want a realistic style guide uh, stuff like that now you can do what I did and then follow the videos along you can watch the video and then do the exercises that I did or you can not do it that's totally up to you but I really recommend that you do it um, Oh, I forgot to mention about the research that if you can, I uh, I found my pictures on Google, but I suggest that you go down to the library just because there's so much more stuff. And the guys who wrote the book books did a lot of research, so they know a lot about the subject that you probably won't search on on Google. Um, yes. The last thing is that this is a new kind of tutorials. It's pay what you want tutorials, which means that you can pay whatever you want for them. But keep in mind, well, if I were you, I would look at the t t first video and then I would think, well, that's pretty cool, I want to see more. Um, and then I would probably buy the guy a beer or something like that just to uh, be a nice guy. But you could give more than a beer, but I suggest just paying a little bit, I don't care that much. You have to pay something to get the video. And that's, uh, yeah, that's the way the system works. But you, if you don't have that much money, pay a little bit. You can pay uh, one cent, actually. <laughs> or you can pay one euro. That's up to you. All right, so this wraps up the first uh, video. We talked a little about what you're going to learn in these videos. And we talked about general things in character design. In the next videos, we are going to uh, start drawing from reference, and it's going to be awesome. So, see you in a little bit. In a little bit. <laughs>